to buy or to rent? How do you get your Miley Cyrus? Welcome to Geek vs. Geek, where Dave Johnson and Rick Broida fight it out over all things tech. It's kind of like a dance-off, but nobody has any rhythm. I'm Helen Hong. Today's topic, getting your tunes. How do you acquire your music? Do you buy it, rent it, or just steal it? Rick is a fan of renting, but Dave wants to own all of his songs outright. What do yeah, you guys obviously. think? Obviously. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to rent music. If you love music, it's not something that you want to be ephemeral, that you want to just disappear like wisps into the wind when you're done with it. Right. You want to own it. You want to hug it. You want to keep it close. <laughs> he wants to hug his music. Wow, how do you do that exactly? <laughs> <laughs> you buy the CD, and then you rip it and store it on your computer, but you still have the CD that you can keep in the garage in case your computer crashes, or you want to re-rip it later oh, so on. Oh, you're or, still talking oh, about... Oh, I still... Well, you could still download music too, but I, I literally do buy CDs because I want to have the liner notes. Wow. Okay, Grandma, first of all, <laughs> your usage of the word rent is really a pejorative. What we're talking about here is subscribing to a music service that gives you all manner of benefits, not the least of which is access to all the music of the world, you know, millions upon millions upon millions of songs yeah. for literally the price of a CD per month. It's 10 bucks a month for Spotify, for Rhapsody, for, for... I hear what you're saying. So you're spending, let's say, $10 a month is probably a good average number for something like Spotify or Rhapsody. $10 a month, every month, for the rest of your life. Because if at any time you stop paying, that music just disappears. What's the difference between this and an argument for movie subscription service, like Netflix or Hulu mm -hmm. Plus? You know, you, you don't want to own all those DVDs. Thank you. That is actually a great comparison. Right. No, actually, it's a terrible comparison. No <laughs> offense, Helen, because I agree I with you so <laughs> often. But it's actually a terrible comparison, because movies I'll typically watch once and never want to see a second time. Why would I want to buy it? But music, if I love like the song, I want to own the song, and I want to be able to listen to it anytime, anywhere for the rest of my life. I think we've reached the point now where we all have our phones and our tablets, and who wants to deal with all the hassle of having to rip CDs or even download music, and now it's on my PC, I gotta move it over to my phone, I gotta put it on my tablet. Yeah. It's a huge hassle now, and it's unnecessary, because with a Spotify or a Rhapsody, you have an app that goes where you go, it's on your Sonos, it's on your phone, it's on your tablet, it's on your computer, it's even in the car. It's just there. It is so okay. convenient, it's worth it. What about sound quality? If you subscribe to something like Spotify or Rhapsody, you get whatever sound quality they choose to pipe into your ear. But if you download music or you buy a CD, you often can control the sound quality. And I'm kind of an audiophile. I want the best possible sound quality. So I will take a CD and I will rip it at the very highest bit rate and it's basically archival quality. You don't get that through Spotify or Rhapsody. And then you have to make sure that you have enough storage on your phone to accommodate your archival quality music, which you will not and I have do. nearly enough space to, to handle. I mean, you're talking about being able to, t to carry with you maybe 100, 200 albums versus having on-demand access to thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of albums. All right, guys, break it up, break it up. I am ready to make my verdict, and I'm going to go with Rick on this argument because the days of CDs are over. I'm sorry, Dave, but where do you even buy CDs anymore? The last time I saw them was, like, at Starbucks. The three CDs they have there next to the bananas, yeah, CDs are dead. Spotify is the wave of the future. You have thousands of songs at your fingertips. What do you guys think? Old school, new school? Let us know on Facebook, Twitter, or email, and we'll see you next time on Geek vs. Geek.